So for those of you who do YouTube videos and watch me, or for those of you who just like know things about like things and AV equipment and stuff, I need your help. I need to find microphones that work well for live streaming. Specifically, I said microphones too for live streaming. And it is completely channel related. And I am lost because there are so many options and this is all very confusing to me. And I know that there are smart people out there who have the answers. And so if you would like to help me, please drop some comments below. And I would appreciate that so very much. Yes, that has nothing whatsoever to do with today's pour, although I am sharing my knowledge base with you as a, like a, a thank you. It's like a cool barter system. Totally works out, right? Yeah. I will tell you all about the knowledge that I'm sharing with you in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 351 of 365 days of soap, and we're doing some mica chit chats today. Now, the reason for that is I actually get a lot of questions about micas. Should you use natural or synthetic, or is mica natural? And that's like a whole ass loaded question in and of itself. And I figured now, since I basically use micas and clays, those are the things that I mostly use to color everything, that we should talk about it and talk about what micas are, what goes into them, how they're made, and what kind of micas you should really be using, you know, in your soaps, should you choose to go the mica route. So that's what we're really focusing on today. So let's get to the video and watch me pour some cool soap that you can't actually have because it's for someone else while we do it. Okay, so today we are going to talk all about micas and, you know, I will actually be giving a huge shout out to Mad Micas throughout all of this and this is why. So on every single label that does not rub off, unlike Brambleberry, it lists everything that's in that particular mica. I mean, in addition to if it's skin safe and soap safe and lip safe and ice, all of that, right? but it lists every single thing that goes into creating this mica. And so one of the questions I get, and see, so it's, it's right there, so you can look that up. You can look up mica, titanium dioxide, iron oxide, and silica. And if you actually need the exact um, color index numbers for that, you can go to Mad Mica's site and click on it as well to pull the actual like five digit code for all of that and look it up. It's on, I mean, it's on everyone's MSDS pages. It's on everyone's data pages that sell, you know, micas. But the cool thing about Mad Micas is it puts it all right out there in front of you, everything that you need to look this up and see, you know, what the source is, if any of it's dangerous, all of that jazz. And so for that reason, I really, really love Mad Micas. And that is a reason why I, shop their micas almost exclusively just because they have all of that information right front and center and you don't have to download the msds and look at it and you know until your eyes cross finding all the information which is cool so yeah one of the questions that i get asked a whole bunch is do you use natural or synthetic micas and that is a very interesting um question now with this to disperse the micas into to disperse the micas, I'm pouring out 
a portion of the oils that's used for the total batch. The thing that I'm making right now is a, uh, a soap for a custom order. And this is, um, well, it's a version of the magic bars that I made in the summer, really. And so, you know, the, the soap itself isn't super important because we're talking about micas today and these soaps are not available for you. They're just, this is the, this is the soap batch that I decided to uh, to use to chit chat about micas. So yes, a lot. I get questions about whether or not you should use synthetic or natural micas. And that is a very interesting conversation. Just like across the board that, hmm, it's a thing for sure. Because here's the thing, we have had conversations about natural before right? And what natural means and what it doesn't mean and whether natural also means good for you. And I think the answer that we can all sort of agree on right now is that natural does not mean good for you. Like that's not the thing. And I've given the example of, you know, like asbestos, natural. Yes, but not good for you. Will kill you. Will literally kill you. Uh, lead, arsenic, mercury, all things that are naturally occurring, all things that naturally occur within micas to that. And they're not good for you. And so this idea of natural, while it's not super regulated in the, in the United States, is such a weird... It, it's a weird way to determine whether or not you're using something within your soaps. Because again, naturally occurring mica if it's not properly sourced, can also contain a whole bunch of stuff that you don't want. Like, you know, mercury, lead, arsenic, all of the things. And so to that, we're getting more into this. We will be getting more into this, you know, in, in just a moment with all of it. But I do have to, you know, kind of preface this whole thing with First and foremost, natural does not always mean good for you. So sometimes it's better to actually have your mica synthetically created. And so next up with that, can you use natural micas in your in your soaps? Yeah, sure you can. You totally can. Um, you're gonna get very muted colors like grays and maybe some like orangey pink hues every once in a while, as whites. But for the most part, anything that's any of these colors, that's not a natural mica by definition of it literally came out of the earth and now I'm using it. There are natural ingredients that are also found in the earth that can be used to color your micas and then you get to make the determination as to well does that mean that it's natural even though it was gone it, it went through a heat cycle to you know do the thing and color the mica a different color and so does that mean no longer natural? I would tend to go with, yeah, that means no longer natural. Um, people call things natural identical, natural adjacent. I think it's deceiving. You guys know my opinions on the word natural anyway. I think it's a big deception point. Everybody who's like, oh yeah, natural. Because like, even if you want to get technical with it, the lie that is used to make the soap usually not natural because for purity sake you want to produce that in you know known conditions so but you know that's first and foremost that let's move on to mica okay so then in order to you know determine what's in your synthetic mica and whether or not that's something you want you know to use or on your skin or on your your customer skins or you know whatever that's when you actually do start digging down into your data sheets and luckily because again a company like mad micas they're very very user friendly and all of that in that on the page of the uh the, the mica in question they list it all out and they give the information without having to actually download your msds which is nice and so let's go back to like the very first one, that blue that we're using, that is Indigo Girls, right? And so on their website, they give the particle size, which is actually important in FDA guidelines, as well as the ingredients that go, that go into that. So mica, which is a color index number of 77019 and is found in about 
18% of all products. Um, so it is a, and that's not information that's on Mad Micah's site. That's just what you get when you Google CI77019. So that's in there. Titanium dioxide, which is CI77891. Now titanium dioxide is an interesting one because that actually does have some carcinogenic rate, ratings in like California, for, like inhalation, stuff like that. And uh, tin oxide, which is CI77861. Tin ox oxide is considered safe in all applications and it's primarily used to do like color shift effects. And so they're, that's why I'm assuming they're putting that into indigo girls versus like another blue that they have, which is literally just titanium dioxide, mica, and ultramarine blue, right? So they want the, the sort of shimmer shift. And then also the last thing in the indigo girls is ultramarine blue, CI77007. Now tin oxide, ultramarine blue, titanium dioxide, and mica is all naturally found in, the, in, in, earth, in you know, nature, naturally occurring. But all of those things go together to create this mica, and so therefore no longer naturally occurring, right? So it is a synthetic. As far as I'm concerned, that becomes a synthetic. And so the question, do you use synthetic or natural micas? I use synthetic micas. I use synthetic micas because I actually do want to preserve the purity of the thing that I'm putting in there. And again, you can use natural micas. You just have to be careful where you source them. And to that, you should be careful where you source your synthetic micas as well, because depending on the types of different colorants that go into it, because it doesn't have to be more ultramarines or pigments, which are sort of nat which are naturally occurring, like, you know, in, in, in the world, it can be artificial dyes. And so then you want to, you want to know that. So do be careful with where you source your micas. But yeah, I mean, synthetic is, fine and for me it's something that i use instead of natural because i again i want to make sure that the the purity rating is there do that can you use natural mica of course you can uh, of course you can i would make sure that you're sourcing it from a place that has disclosed the the purity level though to make sure that you don't have things like lead or arsenic or whatever like in your soaps so then it kind of comes down to this whole question about Okay, so if natural mica can be bad for you and mica, synthetic mica can have things in it that, you know, we don't like, what do I do to color my soaps? Well, that's when you start using like actual natural colorants like, you know, infusions and clays and you can do some beautiful stuff with beetroot powder and annatto seed and uh, carrot um, extra. I mean, there's just, you can do just so much cool stuff with all the clays with naturally occurring with natural colors. But if you're wanting to use mica in order to color your soaps, you're, you're never going to get like a bright purple or a weird mermaid blue. Like that's not going to happen. Um, if you're using a natural mica. And also that's very hard to do. It's a very tough sell within natural colorants as well. So if you want the bright fun colors, or if you want to use micas in general, I, I would go the synthetic route. Um, or more importantly, I really wouldn't go the synthetic route. I'm not even going to say that. You can use natural, you can use synthetic. Either way is fine. Just make sure the place that you're sourcing them from is responsible and they have all the information readily available for you so you know what is in that mica and that it was you know ran through the appropriate testing and uh that is day 351 a big old mica chit chat and you know there it is some mica natural versus synthetic and what goes into synthetic and all of the things chit chat now for me personally my biggest focus when i am making any product is going to be you know safety and consistency and purity ratings and so for that there are cases where using a synthetic is actually a safer bet than using a natural. That said, where you are sourcing your natural micas, as long as they have good data pages and they can prove that level of purity, and we don't have like the arsenic and the lead and the mercury and all the stuff in them, 
that's fine too. Just understand that you're never gonna get that beautiful sparkly pinks or purples or like, you know, ultra, well, ultramarine's a different one, but you know, like that mermaid blue, you're not gonna get that in a, in a natural mica. That's never going to actually color your soaps that way. So think about what it is that you wanna do and what you want your focus to be. And in all honesty, none of the focuses are wrong. Like none of them. There is room for each and every soap maker out there. Find your niche, stick with it, because when you're true to you and the things that are important to you, that's when all the stuff super thrives, for sure. Uh, for me, I use the synthetic micas because I like all the sparkly colors, and also I uh, really like knowing that my micas are, the standard of purity is there, and I don't have to worry about any rogue, you know, particles, yes. So if you're interested in these soaps, as I said earlier, you can't have them. They're actually a custom order for somebody else. So, so sorry, but we have a ton of stuff at soapandclay.com. So you can totally go check it out there. If you're interested in subscribing to the channel, that would be excellent. I know we are nearing the end of 365 days of soap, but based on the way I started this video, you've gotta be assuming that a, a year or two is in the works, right? Right. So yeah, subscribe and see what we have in store for you for year two. And also, you know, help us out. Give us some information about the things that you'd like to see. That would be excellent. We definitely take suggestions into consideration and constructive criticism into consideration as well. But if you're just a dick in my comments, you get the boot. That's all there is to it. Um, for the people who are my subsers and are subscribed, hey, uh, thank you for being my subsers and for being subscribed and for not being a dick in my comments. I appreciate that a lot. I'm out of here for today. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.